Unit 3 Bacteria, General Account and Economic Importance Structure 3.1 Introduction Objectives 3.2 Discovery Pre-20th Century Transition into 20th Century 3.3 Prokaryotic Cell and Eukaryotic Cell 3.4 General Characteristics Size Shape of Bacteria Arrangement of Bacterial Cell 3.5 Cell Wall and its Adherence Cell Wall Surface Adherence 3.6 Protoplasm Cell Membrane Cytoplasm Genome Plasmids Ribosomes Microcompartments Gas Vesicles Magnetosomes 3.7 Economic Importance of Bacteria 3.8 Summary 3.9 Terminal Questions 3.10 Answers Glossary 3.1 Introduction Bacteria in fossils form have been found in geological strata about 3.5 billion year ago and they are almost three times as old as any organism known to have existed on the planet Earth. Approximately 5,000 species of bacteria are recognized today and you can find them in every possible habitat that you can think. They are found in plants, animals, every type of soil and water, also in ice caps, hot springs, hypersaline environments and in atmospheres rich in toxic gases like methane or hydrogen sulfide that would kill most other organisms. Bacteria, the simplest organisms living on Earth, are too small to be seen with the unaided eye, and are the most abundant of all organisms. The bacteria are an extremely diverse group of microorganisms exhibiting different types of morphology and physiology. They are also the only organisms with prokaryotic cellular organization. Life on Earth cannot exist without bacteria because they make possible many of the essential functions of ecosystems, including fixing nitrogen from the atmosphere, decomposition of organic matter in many aquatic communities. Bacteria play a vital role both in productivity and in cycling the substances essential to all other life forms. Bacteria are ubiquitous on Earth. Objectives After studying this unit, you will be able to appreciate the history of discovery of bacteria, list the characteristic features of bacteria, classify bacteria on the basis of shapes, identify the structure and morphology of bacteria and describe various organelles found in bacterial cell appreciate the economic importance of bacteria, and know about the harmful effects of bacteria. 3.2 Discovery Microorganisms are omnipresent and have been found in different microenvironments for billions of years. However, prior to the invention of the microscope, there was no scientific proof of the existence of microorganisms. Though, scattered reports from different parts of the world, over a span of centuries, were available on the possible existence of microbes. Let us start with an overview of milestone events that made the history of microbiology, Table 3.1. Period from 1857 to 1910 in the history of microbiology is named as the Golden Age of Microbiology. Discoveries during this period led to the establishment of microbiology as a science. Table 3.1. Some important events in the development of microbiology year investigator, S. Events 1676 Anton van Leeuwenhoek first observation of very little animalcules now recognized as protozoa 1684 Anton van Leeuwenhoek discovery of bacteria 1798 Edward Jenner vaccination with cowpox for preventing smallpox 1857 Louis Pasteur lactic acid fermentation 1860 Louis Pasteur role of yeast in alcoholic fermentation 1861 Louis Pasteur proof of biogenesis 1864 Louis Pasteur pasteurization 1867 Joseph Lister antiseptic principles in surgery 1876 Robert Cook bacillus anthracis as the causative agent of anthrax 1881 Robert Cook methods for study of bacteria in pure culture 1882 asterisk Robert Cook discovery of mycobacterium Cause of tuberculosis 1884 Robert Cook Cox postulates 1884 Asterisk Ali Mechnikoff description of phagocytosis 1884 Hans Christian Graham Graham staining technique 1885 Louis Pasteur vaccination against rabies in humans 1887 Richard J. Petrie Petrie dish, plate Developed 1889 Sergei Winogradsky nitrification and chemolithotrophy 1889 Martinus W. Bigerant crystallized virus, 
isolated rhizobium 1890 asterisk Emil von Bering antitoxins for diphtheria 1892 Dmitry Ivanovsky virus, the causative agent of tobacco mosaic disease 1901 Martinus W. Bigerink enrichment culture method term virus 1910 asterisk Paul Ehrlich chemotherapeutic agents. Drug for syphilis 1928 Frederick Griffith Transformation in Bacteria 1929 Asterisk Alexander Fleming, Ernst Miracle Drug Penicillin from Chain, Howard W. Flory Penicillium Notatum, Effective Against Bacterial Infection 1935 Asterisk Wendell M. Stanley, Northrop Crystallized Tobacco Mosaic and Sumner Virus 1941 Asterisk George Beadle and Edward Tatum 1 Gene 1 Enzyme Hypothesis 1944 Oswald Avery, Colin McLeod, Explanation of Girafitha's Work, McLean McCarty DNA is Genetic Material 1944 Selman Waxman Discovery of Streptomycin 1953 Asterisk James Watson Francis Crick Molecular Structure of DNA 1961 Asterisk Francois Jacob, Jacques Mono concept of an operon 1970 asterisk Daniel Nathans. Hamilton O restriction enzymes used for Smith, Werner Arbor Genetic Engineering 1975 George's Kohler, Caesar, Milstein monoclonal antibodies 1977 Fred Sanger, Stephen Nicklin, Methods for sequencing DNA Alan Cowlson 1978 asterisk Peter Mitchell Chemiosmotic Mechanisms 1982 asterisk Aaron Klug Structure of Tobacco Mosaic Virus 1983 Loop Montagener Discovery of HIV, The Cause of AIDS 1986 Benjamin Hall, Gustav Ammerer Hepatitis B Vaccine Produced by Genetic Engineering 1994 RJ Kino Cultured 40 Million Year Old Bacteria 1996 Andre Goffio et al. Yeast Genome Sequenced 1998 James B. Capper et al. Discovered Two Circular Chromosomes in Vibrio Cholerae 1999 Frederick R. Blattner, et al. Escherichia coli Genome Sequenced 2000 Edward DeLong Discovery of Marine Archaea 2002 Geronimo Cello Paul A.V. Synthesis of Infectious Eckerd Wimmer Poliovirus from Basic Chemical Building Blocks 2004 J. Craig Venter, ETL First Large Scale Environmental Genome, Shotgun Sequencing of the Sargasso Sea The Roman Philosopher, Lucretius, 98-55 BC, and a Physician Girolamo Fracas Toro, 1478-1553, suggested that invisible living creatures caused diseases. An Italian called Francis Stelluti made observations on bees and weevils between 1625 and 1630, by using a microscope. The English scientist Robert Hooke built a compound microscope and observed the minute compartments in the slices of cork through it and named these compartments as cells. He also observed and reported seeing elongated stalks, in around 1664, which were in fact, the fruiting structures of fungi. Visualization of microorganisms was made easier by the development of more advanced microscopes as well as techniques like staining. 3.2.1 Pre-20th century microbiology did not exist as an area of science in the 19th century, although human beings had been practicing microbiology from prehistoric times. Beer and wine production was common. Foods were preserved by drying and addition of salt. However, no one knew the reason behind any of these processes. Diseases used to spread and acquire epidemic proportions, but man did not know the cause of these diseases. It was the dedicated efforts of a few people, some not even trained to be scientists like Anton van Leeuwenhoek, and others who had scientific training like Louis Pasteur, Robert Cook, and Martinus Bigerink that microbiology blossomed into a science. Fig 3.1, Anton van Leeuwenhoek June 16, 1675 Recording of Anton van Leeuwenhoek, I discovered, in a tiny drop of water, incredibly many very little animalcules, and these of diverse sorts and sizes. They moved with bending, as an eel always swims with its head in front, yet these animalcules swam as well backwards as forwards, though their motion was very slow. Anton van Leeuwenhoek The credit for discovering the microbial world goes to a Dutch merchant, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723, Fig 3.1, who had no university education. He is known as father of microbiology. 
he was a draper, haberdasher, and also the official wine taster of Delft, a place in Holland. To begin with, he made lenses to magnify and inspect the cloth pieces. Later, to satisfy his own quest for knowledge, he began constructing simple microscopes with double convex glass lenses held between two silver or glass plates. His microscopes could magnify around 50 to 300 times. He eventually made more than 250 microscopes. Beginning in 1673, Leeuwenhoek started sending detailed letters written in Dutch, describing his observations to the Royal Society in London. Most of these letters were translated in English and published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society. He examined samples of river water, pepper infusions, saliva, feces etc. It was clear from his descriptions that he was the first person who saw both bacteria and protozoa, as we know them today, under his microscope. He called the microscopic forms of life animalcules as he thought they were tiny living animals. Fig 3.2 Louis Pasteur Louis Pasteur until 19th century, the most common topic of scientific debate was regarding the theory of spontaneous generation, called abiogenesis. This theory proposed that living organisms could arise spontaneously from non-living matter. It had been observed that there was a connection between the growth of microorganisms in the organic broth and onset of the chemical changes. The chemical changes in broth were due to fermentation, Souring of carbohydrates in grapes that lead to the production of wine, the process of conversion of sugars into alcohol in the absence of air, and putrefaction, decomposition of meat proteins. The question was where did microorganisms come from? Italian physician Francesco Ridi, 1626-1697, was among the first to provide evidence against spontaneous generation. He carried out an experiment where he took meat in three containers, one was uncovered, second was sealed and the third was covered with a fine gauze. Needless to say, flies laid eggs on the uncovered meat and not on the covered meat. Flies also laid eggs on the gauze covering, which prevented or delayed the contact of eggs with meat and hence no initial appearance of maggots. Hence, he proved that maggots, fly larvae, came from the eggs of flies and not from the decaying meat, Fig 3.3. Fig 3.3 experiment conducted by Reedy that refuted spontaneous generation in maggots. Maggots did not arise from the second jar, as eggs did not come in contact with the meat at all. A further blow to the concept of spontaneous generation came from the work of an Italian scientist Lazzaro Spallanzani, 1729-1799, who was a priest. He demonstrated that by sealing flasks that contained meat broth, and had been heated for long period to destroy microbes, no microbial growth was observed and that these sealed flasks could be stored indefinitely. However, those who supported spontaneous generation argued that sealing the flasks led to the elimination of oxygen and hence Spallanzani's experiments were not considered to be foolproof. The debate finally ended with the experimental work of the French scientist Louis Pasteur, Fig 3.2, 1822-1895. Pasteur placed nutrient solutions in long-necked flasks and heated their necks in a flame, drawing them in the shape of a swan's neck i.e., S-shaped curves. He heated the flasks to boil the nutrient solutions and allowed them to cool. Air could re-enter the flask through the capillary curved neck but its shape prevented bacteria and other microorganisms from reaching the liquid broth, as they remained trapped in the curved neck. The broths remained sterile and could be stored indefinitely unless the swan-shaped necks were broken or the flasks were tipped and liquid came in contact with the air in the neck of the flask, Fig 3.4. The fact that air could enter the flasks and yet no growth was seen in the solutions contained in them disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. The swan-necked flask is now called as Pasteur flask. Some of such flasks used for original work that were sealed later on still show no sign of contamination, Fig 3.4. The work led to the fact that appearance of microorganisms in the non-living nutrient materials like nutrient solutions was due to the microbes already present in the air or in the solutions. Thus, the controversy over spontaneous generation gave way to the theory of biogenesis, which says that living cells can arise only from pre-existing living cells. Louis Pasteur was a chemist by training and a staunch patriot at heart, 
who always tried to solve the problems being faced by French manufacturers in their industrial processes. One such problem he tackled was of souring of alcohol produced from the beets. He compared samples from vats, both with good wine and sour wine under a microscope and observed budding cells of the fungus yeast in good wine and rod-shaped bacteria in sour wine. He thus, proved that these organisms determined the course of the chemical process of fermentation. Yeast cells led to the production of alcohol while rod-shaped bacteria produced lactic acid that made the wine sour. Fig 3.4, the experiment of Pasteur that disproved the theory of spontaneous generation. A. The long neck of the flask is bent into S-shaped curve and the contents are sterilized. B. No microbial growth occurs if the flask remains upright. C. On bending the flask, microorganisms trapped in the neck come in contact with the nutrient liquid and grow rapidly. This discovery established that some microorganisms could carry out anaerobic metabolism. It also hinted that the nature of microbial metabolism, aerobic or anaerobic transformation of organic matter, decided the formation of an end product. In 1857 Pasteur showed that souring of milk was also the result of microbial action. In the year 1860 he recommended heating of wine and beer at moderate temperatures, a process now known as pasteurization, to control microbial contamination. He also sowed the seed of doubt among the minds of scientists, that bacteria could also be the cause of diseases. This was the initiation of the concept of germ theory of disease that emphasized the role of microorganisms in the development of infectious diseases. The other outstanding contribution of Pasteur was the development of vaccine by using attenuated culture of virulent bacteria. Incubating these bacterial cultures for long intervals between transfers produced attenuated cultures. He also developed an attenuated anthrax vaccine by treating cultures with potassium dichromate and by incubating the bacteria at 400C to 430C. For developing the rabies vaccine, he injected the virus in the heterologous host, the rabbit. After the death of the infected rabbits, the brain and spinal cord were removed, dried and powdered to be used as a vaccine. Pasteur administered increasingly virulent doses of the attenuated virus 13 times over a period of 10 days, to a nine-year-old boy, Joseph Meister, who had been bitten by a rabid dog. The boy survived and the concept of vaccines got a strong foothold. It was an appreciation of his development of vaccines that people from all over the world contributed to the establishment of the Pasteur Institute in Paris. Fig 3.5, Robert Cook Robert Cook as early as the 16th century, it was thought that there was something that got transmitted from a diseased person to a healthy person, and that something could make the healthy person sick. Even though it was thought that microorganisms were responsible for infectious diseases, there was no proof in favor of this belief. The work of Robert Cook, 1843-1910, a German physician, Fig 3.5, laid the foundation of the germ theory of disease. Cook worked on the disease anthrax which is caused by the bacterium Bacillus anthracis in cattle and in humans. He found that the blood of an animal dying of anthrax always showed bacteria, and if the blood from a diseased mouse was injected into a healthy mouse, it also suffered from anthrax. He then took blood from the second mouse and injected it into another healthy mouse. He repeated this for 20 times and was always successful in transmitting the disease and always detected bacilli in the blood of dying animals. His criteria for proving the role of microorganisms as causative agents of an infectious disease are known as Cox postulates which are summarized below, Z a specific microorganism is present in every diseased animal but absent in a healthy animal. Z the suspected microorganism can be isolated from the host and grown in a pure culture. The same disease must result when the isolated microorganism is inoculated into a healthy but susceptible host. Z the same microorganism must be isolated from the diseased host and cultured again under laboratory conditions. It should be identical to the original microorganism. Cook further cultivated bacteria outside the bodies of animals, in media such as beef serum and found that cultured bacteria were as effective in causing the disease as bacteria from diseased animals. He emphasized the importance of pure culture and devised several ways of obtaining pure cultures. One well-known way is isolation of single colonies on solid media, 
where colonies can be grown from a single microbial cell or a spore. He initially used sterile surfaces of cut and boiled potatoes. But as all bacteria did not grow well on potato, he looked for other alternatives. He added gelatin to nutrient fluids to solidify but realized that many bacteria digested the gelatin. It also melted at temperatures above 280C. Fanion Hesse, the wife of his assistant, Walter Hesse, suggested the use of agar as a solidifying agent in the medium. Agar melts at 100C and solidifies at 40C. Another assistant, Richard Petrie developed the Petrie dish for holding solid culture media under aseptic conditions. IN1882, Cook isolated the bacillus, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, that causes tuberculosis. In those times tuberculosis was one of the largest killers of mankind. The etiology of tuberculosis was unknown and Cox's aim was to pinpoint the microbe responsible for this disease. In order to achieve this, he used all the techniques devised by him and his associates, such as microscopy, staining of tissues, pure culture isolation and animal inoculation. He stained the tissue samples of infected person with alkaline methylene blue and Bismarck brown. He observed bright blue, rod-shaped cells of M. tuberculosis in the infected tissues. He succeeded in growing the pure cultures of M. tuberculosis and clearly established the cause of tuberculosis by infecting guinea pigs with M. tuberculosis and again isolating the bacilli from diseased animals. Cook also prepared tuberculin, a substance that is being useful in the diagnosis of tuberculosis. Cook was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1905 for his work. He also visited the veterinary research station, Mukteswar, Uttaranchal during British rule, where British used to breed horses. Fig 3.6, Martinus Bigerink Martinus Bigerink The earliest developments in the field of microbiology that gained worldwide attention were in medical microbiology, as we learned through the works of Louis Pasteur and Robert Cook. However, other scientists were quick to tap the potential uses of microbes. One such area was ecology that examines the interactions of microorganisms with their biotic and abiotic surroundings. Martinus Bigerink, 1851-1931, Fig 3.6, studied symbiotic and non-symbiotic aerobic nitrogen fixation carried out by bacteria. He isolated the nitrogen-fixing, free-living, aerobic bacterium Azotobacter and also the bacterium Rhizobium that forms nodules on the roots of leguminous plants and fixes nitrogen symbiotically. He showed how these bacteria could use atmospheric nitrogen for synthesizing their cell constituents. These microbes thus, help to maintain the supply of chemically combined nitrogen, such as NO2, N2O, NO3, NH3, on which rest of the life forms are dependent. Bigerink also worked with sulfate-reducing bacteria. He found that the bad odor from the canals in his town in summertime was due to bacteria that could change sulfates to H2S, which smelled like rotten eggs. Along with Russian microbiologist Sergei Winogradsky, 1856-1953, Fig 3.7, Bigerink developed the enrichment culture technique, which was a step towards the development of selective culture media. With the help of these techniques, we can isolate microorganisms with desirable qualities from a mixed population. For instance, if we need to isolate bacteria from soil that produce enzymes, which are stable at alkaline pH and high temperatures, the medium having pH and alkaline range is inoculated with the soil sample and incubated at high temperature, by doing so repeatedly, alkalophilic and thermophilic bacteria from soil sample will grow selectively. These bacteria produce thermostable enzymes, which work optimally at alkaline pH and high temperature. The works of Winogradsky and Bigerink were mainly responsible for establishing the biogeochemical role of microbes in cycling of matter such as in carbon, nitrogen, and sulfur cycles. Microbes play an important role in the turnover of matter on Earth as many species of microorganisms can carry out chemical transformations which plants and animals are not able to perform. Bigerink was first to characterize viruses. Prior to this, virus was the general term used for poisons and infectious agents. 
Bigerant used the term virus for the specific disease causing molecules that get incorporated into the cells and borrow the metabolic and replicative machinery for their use from the infected cells i.e., the host cell. Subsequent findings in the area established the branch virology. Fig 3.8, Eli Mechnikov Eli Mechnikov The Russian zoologist Eli Mechnikov, 1845-1916, Fig 3.8 contributed very significantly to the field of immunology. It was believed that noncellular molecules in the blood were responsible for the immunity against the diseases. Mechnikov in 1880s proved that there were certain cells in the body that were able to ingest the microbes. He called such cells as phagocytes, which means cell eating. Identifying the role of cellular phagocytes in defense of the body against microbial infections was first step in the understanding of immunity. In 1908 Mechnikov was awarded Nobel Prize for his pioneering work on phagocytosis and immunology. 3.2.2 Transition into 20th century The works of Pasteur and Cook spearheaded many advances in the field of microbiology eventually establishing it as a subject of science. There was a shift towards two separate directions, basic and applied microbiology. On the applied side, the focus shifted towards the discovery of compounds that could fight pathogens and help in controlling infections. Achievements of various contributors helped towards the establishment of different fields in microbiology such as chemotherapy, virology, immunology, and microbial genetics, that are prolific research areas today. In this subsection, we will study the works of some of the early contributors in these areas. Fig 3.9, Joseph Lister Joseph Lister's surgery was greatly benefited by the introduction of anesthesia in 1840 and the speed of operations was no longer of prime importance. However, post-surgical infections remained a serious concern. Joseph Lister, 1827-1912, Fig 3.9, a British scientist thought that sepsis could also be the result of microbial infections of the exposed tissues. He prevented microbes from infecting the wounds with the help of an antiseptic, carbolic acid. He soaked bandages in carbolic acid that was used as an antiseptic, to dress the wounds on one set of patients while he did not use any antiseptic on another set of patients. The patients who had received antiseptic treatment recovered soon, while those who did not get any antiseptic treatment, showed post-surgical infections. He used carbolic acid air spray in addition to its direct application and also used heat sterilized instruments for surgery. This approach was extremely successful and the incidence of post-surgical infections went down remarkably ever since. This was indirect evidence establishing the role of microorganisms in the diseases. Lister is credited with first aseptic technique and was awarded Order of Merit for his work on the prevention of spread of infection about 37 years after he introduced the use of carbolic acid. Fig 3.10, Paul Ehrlich Paul Ehrlich Paul Ehrlich, 1854-1915, Fig 3.10, was born in Breslau, now in Poland, and became a medical doctor there. He was interested in chemical dyes that react specifically with organs, tissues, and cells. He began testing them for therapeutic properties. His aim was to find a magic bullet that is, a chemical that would specifically kill pathogens and leave the host cells intact. His findings that certain dyes stained only the microorganisms and not the animal cells, suggested that some chemicals might selectively kill the microbes and not the host cells. From 1880 to 1896 he worked in Cox Laboratory and later became the founder-director of an institute, which he dedicated to the synthesis of chemical compounds. He synthesized hundreds of such compounds and in 1909 he synthesized his 606th compound, dihydroxidiamino arsenobenzene dihydrochloride, which he called salversan. Both salversan and neosalversan which was his 914th compound, were very effective against syphilis. His 418th compound, arsenophenylglycin, was found to be effective against sleeping sickness. Ehrlich coined the term chemotherapy. He shared the Nobel Prize with Eli Mechnikov in 1908 for the work on antibody formation against toxins. Fig 3.11, Alexander Fleming. Alexander Fleming Alexander Fleming 
1881-1955, Fig 3.11, was a Scottish physician in London's St. Mary's Hospital. He was working with Staphylococcus aureus and observed that one of the plates was contaminated with a mold. Around the mold was a zone of clearance where the Staphylococcus was unable to grow. He identified the mold as Penicillium notatum. He cultivated P. notatum in broth and added a drop of this broth to a culture of Staphylococcus. The culture of Staphylococcus disintegrated. He also found that other gram-positive bacteria were also susceptible to the mold. Fleming inferred that penicillium was producing some substance that inhibited the growth of bacteria. He named this substance as penicillin but was unable to purify it. The report on his work attracted attention of the scientific world ten years later when H. W. Florey and E. Chain of Oxford University came across his work, purified penicillin, and conducted chemical trials that led to the discovery of the miracle drug. Florey, Chain, and Fleming received the Nobel Prize in 1945. Selman Waxman Selman Waxman was a soil microbiologist, who was born in Ukraine and moved to United States in 1910. Fig 3.12. He along with his co-workers at Rutgers University in New Jersey showed that various bacteria of the actinomycetes group produced antibacterial substances. He coined the term antibiotic in 1941 to describe actinomycin and other similar products which he had isolated. He discovered streptomycin, which was produced by the bacterium Streptomyces grus in 1943. This proved to be another wonder drug because unlike penicillin, antibiotics obtained from actinomycetes are broad-spectrum drugs. Streptomycin led to major breakthrough in the treatment of tuberculosis. In the same decade neomycin, chloramphenicol, and chlortetracycline were also isolated by Waxman and others. 3.3 Prokaryotic cell and eukaryotic cell The cell is the basic structural unit of all living organisms. This is a self-contained unit separated from its surrounding by cytoplasmic membrane that serves as its limiting boundary. It contains hereditary material and various organelles. The cell, whether bacterial, archaeal or eukaryotic uses ADP, for energy for various kinds of work. The organizational patterns among living cells of prokaryotes i.e., bacteria, and archaea, are different from eukaryotic organisms such as protists, fungi, plants, and animals. Prokaryotic cells are smaller than eukaryotic cells and simpler in structure, Fig 3.13. The cell is bound by a plasma membrane and interior of the cell is filled with a thick, jelly-like fluid called cytosol in which all the cellular components are suspended. The cell contains tiny structures called ribosomes which make proteins. Most prokaryotes have fairly rigid, chemically complex cell wall which protects the cell and helps to maintain the shape. Thus a bacterial cell has a complex cell envelope that encloses cell protoplasm and its DNA which is coiled into region called the nucleoid, nucleus-like, but no membrane surrounds the DNA. Prokaryotic bacteria can be photosynthetic and known as cyanobacteria which you will study in detail in Block 2, Algae. Fig 3.13 eukaryotic and prokaryotic cell. In contrast, the eukaryotic cell does have a well-defined nucleus. In fact all eukaryotic cells at some time of their life cycle have a nucleus but bacterial and archaeal cells never possess a true nucleus. Eukaryotic means true nucleus while prokaryotic means before the nucleus. Main differences between bacterial, archaeal, and eukaryotic cells are given in Table 3.2. Table 3.2 Comparison of bacterial, prokaryotic, archaeal, and eukaryotic cells structure prokaryotic, prokaryotic, eukaryotic cell, bacterial, archaeal cell, cell cytoplasmic membrane plus 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 nucleus containing a plus nuclear membrane surrounding DNA, DNA arranged as true, plus chromosome with associated histone proteins, ribosomes 70s, 70s, 80s cell wall plus 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 or minus cell wall constituents, peptidoglycan pseudopep if present then tidoglycan cellulosic internal organelles, plus chloroplasts, plus or minus mitochondria, plus endoplasmic reticulum, plus Golgi apparatus, plus vacuoles, plus or minus flagella, plus 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 9 plus 2 microtubular. Plus arrangement it is now revealed that there were three principal lines of evolution that formed three separate domains of cellular evolution, 
bacterial cells, archaeal cells, and eukaryotic cells, Fig 3.14. Archaea and bacteria are the only organisms with prokaryotic cell. They have evolved from a common progenitor cell along distinct lines of evolution. Archaea though are similar to bacteria in terms of structural organization but on a molecular basis are equally related to eukaryotes. Fig 3.14, phylogenetic tree showing evolutionary paths of bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotes. 3.4 General Characteristics You know the difference between a bacterial and eukaryotic cell. Now let us study some morphological characteristics of the bacterial cell such as, size, shape, and their cell arrangement etc. 3.4.1 Size bacteria are very small in size which varies from 0.2 mm to 2.0 mm. Cocci measure somewhere between 0.5 to 3.0 mm. Bacilli range from 0.2 to 2.0 mm diameter and 0.5 to 20.0 mm in length. Vibrios and spirilla vary from 0.2 to 2.0 mm in diameter and 0.5 to 100 mm in length. Spirochetes range from 0.1 mm to 3.0 mm in diameter and from 0.5 to 250 mm in length. By naked eye we can see a body of up to 200 mm diameter while bacteria of medical importance generally measure 0.2 to 1.5 mm in diameter and about 3 to 5 mm in length. 3.4.2 Shape of bacteria Bacteria are classified into several types depending on their shape, Fig.3.15 Z coccus, cocci pl. From coccos meaning berry, are spherical, or nearly spherical. Z bacillus, bacilli pl. From baculus meaning rod, are relatively straight, rod-shaped, cylindrical, cells. In some of the bacilli, the length of the cells may be equal to width. Such bacillary forms are known as cocobacilli and have to be carefully differentiated from cocci. Z vibrios, vibrios are curled or comma-shaped rods and derive the name from their characteristic vibratory motility. Z. Spirillium, Spirilla pl. Spirillium are rigid spiral or helical forms. Z. Spirochetes, Spirochetes, from spirum meaning coil and chate meaning hair, are flexuous spiral forms. Z. Mycoplasma, Mycoplasma is cell wall deficient bacteria and hence do not possess a stable morphology. They occur as round or oval bodies and interlacing filaments. Fig 3.15 Shapes of Bacteria 3.4.3 Arrangement of Bacterial Cells Pathogenic bacteria species appear as spheres, cocci, rods, bacilli, and spirals. Bacteria sometimes show characteristic cellular arrangement or grouping, Fig 3.16. The type of cellular arrangement is determined by the plane through which binary fission takes place and also by the tendency of the daughter cells to remain attached even after division. Cocci arrangement I, diplococci, cocci may be arranged in pairs, diplococci, when cocci divide and remain together. 2. Long chains, long chains, genus Streptococcus, Enterococcus, and Lactococcus, when cells adhere after repeated divisions in one plane. 3. Grape like clusters, grape like clusters, genus Staphylococci, when cocci divide in random planes. 4. Tetrads, square groups of four cells, tetrads, when cocci divide in two planes as in members of the genus Micrococcus. V. Cubical packets, cubical packets of eight cells, genus Sarcina, when cocci divide in three planes. Fig 3.16, Arrangement of Bacterial Cell. Bacilli arrangement Bacilli split only across their short axis, therefore, the patterns formed by them are limited. The shape of the rod's end often varies between species and may be flat, rounded, cigar-shaped, or bifurcated. Some bacilli too may be arranged in chains, streptobacilli. Others are arranged at various angles to each other, resembling the letter V, presenting a cuneiform or Chinese letter arrangement and is characteristic of Corynebacterium diphtheria. 3.5 Cell wall and its adherence Bacterial cell wall is a strong, firm, and flexible structure which gives shape to the bacteria which you have already studied. 
it is somewhat porous so it can help the flow of small molecules to and fro from the bacterial cell. In this section you will study in detail about the structure and function of cell wall and various types of adherence on bacterial cell, Fig.3.17. Fig 3.17, Single Bacterial Cell. 3.5.1 Cell Wall Most of the bacterial cells have a semi-rigid cell wall. It determines the shape of the bacterial cell. It is relatively porous so it can facilitate the flow of small molecules to and from the cytoplasmic membrane. The cell wall covers the entire cell surface and thus acts as an exoskeleton to protect the cell from injury and damage. Along with cytoplasmic cytoskeleton, it helps to maintain the shape of the cells and reinforce the cell envelope against the high intracellular water pressure pushing against the cell membrane. In the absence of such a cell wall bacterial cell would rupture or undergo osmolysis. The cell walls of bacteria and cyanobacteria differ from plants in being made up of mucopeptide, equals peptidoglycan, and not cellulose. This difference provides a site where bacterial pathogens can be attacked by antibiotics without damaging the diseased eukaryotic plant or animal cells. Mucopeptide is a polymer made up of alternating units of NAG, N-acetylglucosamine, and NAM, N-acetylmuramic acid, joined by E, 1 to 4 linkages. NAG and NAM are amino sugars. The mucopeptide chains are laterally linked by short chains of amino acids like lysine which originate at the carboxyl group of the muramic acid molecules and are essential for cross-linking of the amino acid chains. The cell walls of Gram and VE and Gram VE bacteria differ in their chemical composition. The wall of the Gram plus VE bacteria is homogeneous containing 85% or more of mucopeptide and simple polysaccharides, like tychoic acids, tychos equals wall, which are polymers of ribitol and glycerol phosphates. Tychoic acids serve as antigens and also regulate entry of ions. The cell wall of Gram VE bacteria contains only 3 to 12 percent mucopeptide, the rest being lipoprotein and lipopolysaccharide. The wall of Gram VE bacteria can be only seen in electron microphotographs, which appears to be tripartite, i.e., three layered. It is formed by an inner cytoplasmic membrane middle periplasmatic space containing mucopeptide and an outer membrane. The wall of Gram VE bacteria functions like a sieve. The outer membrane contains proteins, called porins, which form aqueous channels through which small molecules can pass. The differences between cell walls of Gram and VE and Gram VE bacteria are shown in Table 3.3. Table 3.3 Differences in the cell walls of Gram and VE and Gram VE bacteria. Points Gram positive Gram negative appearance in homogeneous layer 3 layered electron microphotographs chemical mucopeptide forms major mucopeptide acid forms only composition portion of the wall, 85% of 3 to 12% of the total dry the dry weight, rest being simple weight, major portion polysaccharides, like tychoic contributed by lipoprotein, acids. Do not contain lipids lipopolysaccharide complex. Thus, their wall has high lipid content. No tychoic acids. Rigidity much rigid due to presence of less rigid due to plastic nature greater amount of mucopeptides of lipoprotein and lipopolysaccharides outer membrane absent present periplasmatic absent present space result of protoplasts phaeroplast enzymic digestion functions of the cell wall, Z to impart shape and rigidity to the cell. Z it supports the weak cytoplasmic membrane against the high internal osmotic pressure of the protoplasm, ranges from 5 and 25 atm. Z maintains the characteristic shape of the bacterium. Z it takes part in cell division. Z also functions in interaction, e.g. adhesion, with other bacteria and with mammalian cells. Z provides specific protein and carbohydrate receptors for the attachment of some bacterial viruses. 3.5.2 Surface Adherence Many bacterial species secrete an adhering layer of polysaccharides, or a complex of polysaccharides and small proteins, called the glycocalyx, glycol equals sweet, calyx equals coat. The layer can be thick and covalently bound to the cell, in which case it is known as a capsule. A thinner, loosely attached layer is referred to as a slime layer. Colonies containing cells with a glycocalyx appear moist and glistening. 
the glycocalyx serves as a buffer between the cell and the external environment. Because of its high water content, the glycocalyx can protect cells from desiccation. Another major role of the glycocalyx is to allow the cells to stick to surfaces. The glycocalyx of Vibrio cholerae, for example, permits the cells to attach to the intestinal wall of the host. Streptococcus mutans, an important agent of tooth decay, has a slime layer containing a mass of tangled fibers of a polysaccharide called dextrin. Flagella A bacterium could be non-modal or atrigose when flagellum is not present e.g. Staphylococcus, Streptococcus. Bacteria are termed modal when cells possess one or more flagella, singular flagellum. When flagellum, flagella, is attached to one or both ends then it is polar, e.g. Vibrio, Pseudomonas, or when distributed all over the cell surface it is known as peritricus, e.g. Escherichia coli. The length of flagellum ranges from 1,0 mm to 2,0 mm. And many times they are longer than the diameter of the cell. Each flagellum is made up of a helical filament, hook, and basal body anchored in the cell envelope, Fig.3.18. They are different from the flagella or cilia of eukaryotes and lacking the 9 plus 2 structure. The flagella is a cylindrical, hollow stand made up of protein molecules called flagellin which are structurally similar to the proteins of hair and muscles. The basal body is anchored in the plasma membrane, the hook penetrates the wall and the filament is the part that you can see in the stained slides. The cell wall is necessary for the flagellar movement. Fig 3.18, Structure of Flagella The basal body is an assembly of more than 20 different proteins forming a central rod and set of enclosing rings. Gram-positive cells have a pair of rings embedded in the cell membrane and one ring in the cell wall, while gram-negative cells have a pair of rings embedded in the cell membrane and another pair in the cell wall. The basal body represents a powerful biological motor or rotary engine that generates a propeller-type rotation of the rigid filament. The energy for rotation comes from the diffusion of protons, hydrogen ions, H+, into the cell through proteins associated with the basal body. This energy is sufficient to produce up to 1,500 rpm by the filament, driving the cell forward. The flagella act like propellers to push the cell forward through the fluid, whether in the ocean water, broth in a culture tube, or the fluids in the human gut. When the flagellum or a bundle of flagella rotates anti-clockwise, the cell moves straight ahead in what is called a run. These runs can last a few seconds and the cells can move up to 10 body lengths per second. The fastest human can run about 5 to 6 body lengths per second. So motility is tremendous for bacterial cells in a molasses-like environment in human gut. A reversal of flagellar rotation, clockwise rotation, causes the cell to tumble randomly for a second as the flagella become unbundled and uncoordinated. Tumbling results in a change of direction, so when the flagella again rotate anti-clockwise, another run occurs sending the cell off in a new, random direction. When searching for nutrients, e.g., simple sugars, amino acids, in an environment, a flagellated bacterial cell can manipulate its runs and tumbles so that it moves towards the nutrient, attractant. This process is called chemotaxis. One additional type of flagellar organization is found in the spirochetes, the group of gram-negative, coiled bacterial species. The cells are modal by flagella that extend from one or both poles of the cell but fold back along the cell body. Such endoflagella lie in an area called the periplasm. Motility results from the torsion generated on the cell by the normal rotation of the flagella, in other words, the cell swims in a corkscrew motion. Pili pili, singular pilus, pilus means hair, or fimbrii, see fig 3.17, are short, straight, several in number, thin fiber-like structures which protrude from the surface of most gram-negative bacterial species and recently have also been found in many gram-positive species these rigid fibers which are composed of a protein called pilin act as scaffolding onto specific adhesive molecules, called adhesins are attached at the tip. The primary function of pili is to attach the bacterial cell to other objects. This involves the sticking of bacteria to various surfaces as well to one another. 
As human pathogen pili act as virulence factor because they allow pathogens to attach to tissue and slash or to resist attack by phagocytic white blood cells. Some bacterial species produce F. pilus, fertility pilus, which is involved in bacterial mating and during this process they are found only on those cells that donate DNA to the other cell. F. pili are longer than attachment pili and only one or a few are produced on a cell. These conjugation pili contact with suitable recipient bacterial cell facilitating the transfer of DNA from donor to recipient bacterial cells. This process is called conjugation. Pili are also helpful in locomotion by attaching themselves to a surface and then retracting and pulling the bacterial cell forward. This movement is called either twitching motility or gliding motility. 3.6 Protoplasm In the previous section you have studied about the cell wall of the bacterial cell. The cell wall encloses the protoplasm which consists of cytoplasm, ribosomes, mesosomes, granules, nucleoid, genome, and plasmids. The major constituents of the cytoplasm are water, carbohydrates, salts, amino acids, and enzymes. Now we will describe them in detail, see Fig 3.17. Z cell membrane, Z cytoplasm, Z genome, Z plasmid, Z ribosomes, Z microcompartments, Z gas vesicles, Z magnetosomes. 3.6.1 cell membrane. The bacterial cell membrane is about 7 nm in thickness, and made up of 30 40% of phospholipid, by weight, and 60% of protein. The membrane is quite fluid in nature and with olive oil like consistency. This membrane keeps control on what gets into and out of the cell. The membrane provides a critical barrier between the cell interior and environment. The cell membrane is also involved in energy production including respiration and photosynthesis. A specialized form of energy production including nitrification and methane oxidation also occurs close to the membrane. 3.6.2 Cytoplasm The cell membrane delimits cell cytoplasm, which consists of metabolites and nutrients in a solution. The major constituent of the cytoplasm is water, which acts as a solvent for carbohydrates, salts, amino acids, and enzymes. Within the protoplasm you will find the nucleoid, genome, plasmid, microcompartments, gas vesicles, magnetosomes, ribosomes, mesosomes, and granules. 3.6.3 Genome The bacterial cells do not have a true nucleus or a nuclear membrane. Instead, the DNA is folded into a dense area of material called the nucleoid. It is represented as a sub-compartment in the cytoplasm where the DNA aggregates and usually there is a single chromosome in a cell. The genome is not organized into chromosomes but represented by a circular, long DNA molecule attached to the cell membrane, but sometimes a closed loop of DNA and protein also exists. DNA is also known as chromosome and consists of a single circular molecule of double-stranded DNA. The length of a cell may be 2 μm and the total length of the DNA molecule can be as long as 1200 μm. The DNA contains essential hereditary information for cell growth, metabolism, and reproduction. DNA contains all the genetic material necessary for the metabolism, growth, and survival of the cell. The photosynthetic bacteria possess inner to protoplasmic membrane numerous lamellae, thylakoids, and vesicles, which constitute the photosynthetic apparatus. Mesosomes are extensions of the plasma membrane which simultaneously initiate bacterial genome replication and septum formation during cell division. In addition to the chromosome, many bacteria contain smaller accessory pieces of DNA known as plasmids. 3.6.4 Plasmids Plasmids are stable extrachromosomal DNA molecules that exist as closed loops containing 5 to 100 genes and are a tenth the size of the chromosome. There can be one or more plasmids in a cell and have similar or different genes. Plasmids replicate independently of the chromosome and can be transferred between cells during recombination. Plasmids normally code for unique characteristics that can aid the cell in some specific circumstances but are not vital for the survival of the cell. They also represent important vectors in industrial technologies used in genetic engineering. Some plasmids possess genes for disease-causing toxins or have genes for chemical antibiotic resistance. 3.6.5 Ribosomes One of the universal structures in all cells is the ribosome. 
There are thousands of these nearly spherical particles in the cell cytoplasm, which gives it a granular appearance. In addition, there also are ribosomes loosely associated with the cell membrane. Their relative size is measured by how fast they settle when spun in a centrifuge and measured in Svedberg units, s. Bacterial and archaeal cells have 70s ribosomes composed of 30s and 50s subunits. These ribosomes occur either free in cytoplasm or are associated with membrane. Free ribosomes make soluble proteins that are used in the cell, while the ribosomes associated with membrane produce proteins for the cell envelope and for secretion. 3.6.6 microcompartments Recently, some bacterial species have been found to contain microcompartments. The microcompartments appear to be unique to the bacteria and consist of a polyprotein shell 100 to 200 nm in diameter. These are localized areas where enzymes more directly interact with their substrates or potentially isolate harmful reaction products. 3.6.7 Gas vesicles In some aquatic and marine bacterial species gas vesicles are found which used to achieve buoyancy. These vacuoles are filled with air to decrease the density of the cell which generates and regulates their buoyancy and position in the water column. 3.6.8 Magnetosomes The magnetosome is an example of an actual membrane-bound compartment found in some aquatic bacterial species. These are membrane-bound vesicles containing Fe304 in magnetotactic bacteria. The organelle is used like a compass to navigate aquatic environments and locate preferred areas having little or no oxygen gas. 3.7 Economic importance of bacteria Microorganisms have a major impact on human life by their beneficial and harmful activities since time immemorial and the pathogenic microbes have been a cause of worry for the society. AIDS, leprosy, meningitis, etc. have caused large-scale morbidity and death. Bacteria are also responsible for number of plant diseases which lead to enormous economic losses but they also have lots of useful activities. Besides, they also play a huge role in the ecological stability of the environment. Bacteria are the natural scavengers on the earth. They help in decaying of any dead or waste matter on the surface of the earth and in the soil. Further, they degrade any chemical or biochemical fallen on the soil and thereby detoxify the valuable soil thus make it fit for growth of plants and animals and safe survival on the earth. Even the enormous amount of chemicals we put in our surroundings and other waste are degraded over a period of weeks in the soil. Otherwise the soil and water would be toxic and unable for further use. They provide macro and micronutrients required by primary producers in a marine food chain and sustain marine animals. For decades bacteria have been used for generation of specific products with industrial and medical uses. In this section we will describe the uses of bacteria in various fields of human life. Bacteria play an important role in agriculture, food industry, pharmaceutical industry, leather industry, and tobacco industry. Some of these are role in food industry bacteria play important role in fermentation. So they are used for manufacturing butter, yogurt, cheese, cakes and beer. Alcoholic beverages are produced by fermentation of carbohydrate substrate, present either in grains or fruits, by yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. However after fermentation, the aging of wine, done to impart flavor, is carried out by bacteria. This involves a secondary fermentation called malolactic acid fermentation. This is done to convert malic acid, highly acidic and sour in taste into lactic acid and carbon dioxide. Lactic acid is moderately acidic and imparts good flavor to the wine. The bacteria involved are leuconostochenos, L. plantarum etc. Bacteria are also used for production of wine slash vinegar which uses bacteria like acetobacter and gluconastobacter which oxidize ethanol to acetic acid. For production of scotch whiskey, the bacterium lactobacillus dolbruechii is used after initial fermentation. Fermented food in Japan and China, a number of fermented meat and fish products are consumed. Sausages, hams, salami etc. are fermented using Pediococcus cerevisiae and Lactobacillus plantarum. Sauerkraut, a fermented product of cabbage is consumed worldwide. The fermenting bacteria include Leuconostoc mesenteroides, Lactobacillus plantarum and Lactobacillus brevis. Kimchi 
a food made by cabbage and other vegetables is made by lactic acid bacteria and is common in Korea. Pediococcus cerevisiae, Leuconostoc mesenteroids, Enterococcus faecalis, and Lactobacillus plantarum are important in fermentation reactions leading to generation of specific flavors in pickles. Probiotics are similar to curd consisting usually of live microorganisms which are taken orally to promote good health and used as health supplements. Cheese commercial variety of cheeses is available and formation of this entire cheese making involves lactic acid fermentation of milk. Lactococcus lactis or Lactococcus creameris are used for fermenting the milk. The milk proteins on coagulation form curd. The common bacterial strains which are used for ripening include Leuconostoc creameris, Lactobacillus casei, Lactobacillus bulgaricus etc. Role in pharmaceutical industry Many antibiotics are obtained from bacteria such as streptomycin, teramycin etc. Recombinant bacteria are used to synthesize insulin, growth factors, and other pharmaceutical products. Antibiotics Antibiotics are compounds produced by microorganisms which either kill the target pathogen or inhibit its growth. One of the most common antibiotics produced by bacteria is streptomycin. Streptomycin is a broad-spectrum antibiotic produced by Streptomyces gruis. This bacterium also produces antibiotics like canamycin, neomycin, and tobramycin. Vaccines Bacteria are used to produce vaccines by either separating their antigens or sometimes even as dead or alive one form that lacks pathogenic character. TB vaccine is against tuberculosis, mycobacterium tuberculosis, where dead bacteria of TB are administered to build up resistance to tuberculosis in humans. Once administered, these pathogens cannot cause disease. But the body will be able to produce antibodies to kill any infection of mycobacterium. Inactivated whole agent bacterial vaccines have been formulated for Vibrio cholerae, Pneumococcus, Bordetella, and Salmonella. Hormones naturally occurring strains of bacteria produce a variety of compounds of medical significance hormones. Bacterial genes can be manipulated to produce a much larger number of useful molecules. Genes coding for the synthesis of useful products can be transferred through a vector into a bacterial cell using the procedures of recombinant DNA technology. Energy production The entire world is facing the problem of shortage of energy. Bacteria are used to produce biogas. Biogas is used as alternative resource of energy. Organic waste can be converted into usable forms of energy, fertilizers, and other products by microorganisms through the process of biodegradation. Mining industry bacteria are also used for the extraction of metals from mines. Now recombinant bacteria have been prepared which selectively extract metals from raw ore. The microbes such as Thiobacillus thiooxidans and Thiobacillus ferooxidans are involved in biomining to produce acid which solubles the metal from their ore-bearing rocks. Bioremediation Bioremediation is the process of adjustment of environment to enhance the degradation or transformation of environmental pollutants by microorganisms. Bacteria can degrade a variety of organic compounds thus they are used in waste processing and bioremediation. Bacteria are capable of digesting the hydrocarbons in petroleum therefore they are often used to clean up oil spills and are also used for the bioremediation of industrial toxic waste. Biological control The commonly used bacteria for biological control are Bacillus thuringiensis, also called Bt, it is a gram-positive, soil-dwelling bacterium. Subspecies of this bacterium are used as lepidopteran-specific insecticides. Because of their specificity, these pesticides are regarded as environmentally friendly. It has little or no effect on humans, wildlife, pollinators, and most other beneficial insects. Bacteria are used as pesticides for biological control. It is most effective and cheap method of controlling pests. Biofertilizers Biofertilizers contain live beneficial microorganisms and certain plant nutrients, amino acids, growth hormones trace elements etc., which promote plant growth. They are eco-friendly, cost-effective and renewable and commonly mixed with soil to help plant growth. As you know that nitrogen is a vital nutrient required for growth of living organisms. The atmospheric nitrogen is fixed by bacteria and converted into usable form. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria such as Rhizobium, Azotobacter, 
Azospirillum, Bacillus, Enterobacter, Klebsiella live in root nodules of leguminous plants symbiotically and helps in fixing atmospheric nitrogen. Similarly, Nitrosomonas and Nitrococcus convert ammonium salt to nitrites. These bacteria are quite effective in increasing yields of crop plants when applied in appropriate concentration on seed or in soil. Textile, leather, and tobacco industry Some bacteria like Clostridium are used for redding of hemp, jute and flax. These bacteria separate the fibers. These fibers are used for making clothes and ropes. Bacteria are used for preparing commercial leather. Bacteria are used for drying tobacco leaves. These leaves are used for preparing cigarettes. You have studied all the beneficial activities of bacteria but they are also harmful to human life and plants, now we will describe the harmful effect of bacteria. Bacterial diseases Bacteria as plant pathogens Almost every kind of plant is susceptible to one or more kinds of bacterial disease. These bacterial diseases cause heavy economical losses in terms of agricultural and horticultural deterioration, Table 3.4. The symptoms of these plant diseases vary, but they are commonly manifested as spots of various sizes on the stems, leaves, flowers, or fruits. Other common and destructive diseases of plants, including blights, soft rots, and wilts, also are associated with bacteria. Fire blight which destroys pears, apple trees, and related plants, is one of the most destructive among bacterial diseases. Most of the bacterial diseases are caused by the group of rod-shaped bacteria known as pseudomonads. Table 3.4, Some Important Diseases of Plants S. No. Pathogen Disease 1. Ral's Tanya Solanae Serum, Aerobic, Gram Ring Rot, Wilt, Negative Rods, Former Pseudomonas Gladicola, of potato 2. Burkholderia gladicola, aerobic gram negative onion rot rods, former Pseudomonas gladicola, 3. Xanthomatus axonopodis pv. Citri, aerobic, citrus canker gram negative rods, former Xanthomatus citri, 4. X campstris pv. Malvaceum angular leaf spot of cotton 5. Rhizobium tomophaceans, aerobic, Gram crown gall of negative rods, former Agrobacterium dicot plants to mephaceans, 6. Pectobacterium carotivora pv. Carotivora soft rod of carrot, aerobic, gram negative rods, former Erwinia carotivora 7. E. amylevora pv. Amylevora, facultative fire blight of pear anaerobic, gram negative rods, and apple 8. Xylella fastidiosa. Gram negative rods with Pierce's disease rippled wall, formerly rickettsia like organism, of grapevine 9. Asterisk Candidatus liberobacter, gram negative citrus greening very small rods, 10. Clavobacter sepidonicum, non spore forming, ring rot, wilt, of gram positive rods of irregular shapes, former potato coronibacterium bacterium sepidonicum, 11. Rataeobacter tritici, non spore forming, Gram yellow ear rot positive rods of irregular shapes, former, tendu, of Coronibacterium tritici, wheat 12. Streptomyces scabies, gram positive scab of potato filamentous organism, 13. Spiroplasma citri, wall less pleomorphic citrus stubborn bacteria, former mycoplasma like organism, disease, corn stunt, and mulberry dwarf bacteria cause many diseases in humans, including cholera leprosy, tetanus, bacterial pneumonia, whooping cough, diphtheria and Lyme disease, Table 3.5. Members of the genus Streptococcus are associated with scarlet fever, rheumatic fever, pneumonia, and other infections. Tuberculosis, TB, another bacterial disease, is still a leading cause of death in humans. Table 3.5, Some Bacterial Diseases of Humans S. No. Disease Pathogen 1. Actinomycosis Actinomyces Israeli 2. Anthrax Bacillus Anthracis 3. Bacterial Meningitis Haemophilus Influenza, Neisseria Meningitis, Streptococcus Pneumoniae Listeria Monocytogens 4. Botulism Clostridium Botulinum 5. Cholera Vibrio Cholera Vibrio 6. 
Conjunctivitis Haemophilus Aegypticus 7. Dental Caries Streptococcus Mutans 8. Diphtheria Coronae Bacterium Diphtheria E9. Food Poisoning Staphylococcus aureus, S. Pyogenes, Clostridium perfringens, C. Bacillinum 10. Gas gangrene C. perfringens and others 11. Gonorrhea Neisseria Gonorrhea 12. Leprosy Mycobacterium leprae 13. Peptic ulcers Helicobacter pyrrole 14. Plague, Black Death, Yersinia pestis 15. Shigellosis, Dysentery, Shigella sp. 16 Syphilis Treponema pallidium 17. Tetanus Clostridium tetany 18. Trachoma chlamydia trachomatis 19. Tuberculosis Mycobacterium tuberculosis 20. Typhoid Salmonella Typhi 21. Typhus, Epidemic, Rickettsia prowazeki R. Typhi 22. Hooping cough Yersinia enterocolitica 3.8 Summary Z. The milestone events in the history of microbiology which started in year 1676 to 2004. In 1676 Anton Leeuwenhoek observed of very small animalcules and discovered bacteria in 1684. Z. Bacteria are prokaryotic microorganisms that do not contain true nucleus and are unicellular and do not exhibit true branching. Z. Most bacteria have cell walls that consist of a network of polysaccharide molecules connected by polypeptide cross-links. Z. A bacterial cell does not possess specialized compartments or a membrane-bounded nucleus, but it exhibits a nucleoid region where the bacterial DNA is located. Z. Bacteria are classified based on the shape as cocci, bacilli, vibrio, and spirilla and they are classified as diplococci, streptococci, tetrads and cubical packets based on arrangements. Z. Bacterial cell has cell wall, inner protoplasm, and other components which include plasmids, ribosomes, microcompartments, gas vesicles, and magnetosomes. Z. Bacteria have a noteworthy impact on human life because of their beneficial and harmful activities. Now it is possible to manipulate microbes for benefit of mankind by using the latest advances in biological sciences and technology. Bacteria plays major role in food industry, medicine, environmental management, and agriculture. Glossary A. Biogenesis, the concept which promotes the view that life arises spontaneously from non-living matter. Alkalophilic, bacteria that thrive at very high pH. Biofertilizer, fertilizers which contain live beneficial microbes which help increase nutrient content of soil. E.g., nitrogen-fixing bacteria-rich soil, vermi-post biofuel, alternate source of energy, generated by using plants or microbes, from readily available, cheap substrates like plant residues slash municipal wastes etc ethanol from fermentation of sugars slash cellulose etc. Biogas, inflammable mixture of gases used for generating energy from wastes, such as municipal or industrial wastes, generally contain CH4, CO2, hydrogen etc. Biogenesis, the concept that states that a life originates from a pre-existing life, opposite of spontaneous origin of life hypothesis. Chemolithotrophs microbes that obtain energy through chemical oxidation and use inorganic compounds as source of electrons. Canker, plant diseases, or conditions of diseases, that interfere with translocation of water and minerals to crown of the plant. Fermentation, a mode of energy yielding metabolism which involves a sequence of oxidation reduction reactions in which an organic substrate usually carbohydrates and the organic compounds derived from the substrate serve as the primary electron donor and the terminal electron acceptor, respectively. Fimbri, structure involved in cell to cell contact between mating bacteria. Flagellum, flexible, relatively long appendage on cells used for locomotion. Glycocalyx, Specialized bacterial structure with an attachment function composed of a mass of tangled fibers of polysaccharides or branching sugar molecules surrounding a cell or colony of cells. Pasteurization, reduction in number of microbes by exposure to raised temperatures but not necessarily killing the microbes in sample, a kind of heat treatment that is lethal for causal agent of a large number of milk transferable diseases, to prevent deterioration of milk. Phagocytosis 
the process in which particulate matter is ingested by a cell, involving the engulfment of that matter by the cell membrane. Probiotics, curd-like dairy products which contain microbes and are taken orally to promote good health and also used as health supplement. Susceptible, the likelihood of an organism getting infected if exposed to the causative agent. Thermophilic, microbes showing optimal to higher growth at temperatures higher than 4-5 degrees C. Vaccination, the administration of a vaccine to stimulate the immune response to protect an individual from a pathogen or toxin. Vaccine, a preparation of antigens used for vaccination.